So the things that I see that people have toggled on on their iPhone or what they're doing always truly blows my mind. Things that they believe are saving their battery life or which they completely just forgot about. And in this video, I'd like to share with you things you need to stop doing with and on your iPhone. And for some of you, these are absolutely going to be uh, so useful and helpful. Let's dive into the video. Okay, so let's start with the lock screen. What I see most people have here is the camera icon in the bottom right and this is actually really useless because you can just access the camera by swiping from the right to the left and then you have immediate access to the cameras so this makes this button here pretty useless and it's better just to replace it with something you think is more useful so you can do that just to go to the lock screen and edit your lock screen and you can remove this one and let's add something maybe the calculator or maybe you have something else that's way better to be used there what you can do for example add the voice memo right there if you need to record stuff quickly it's better than have that there and still on the lock screen i see people removing their focus mode by swiping up from the top right to the bottom and then going into here and then toggle off their focus mode but there's actually a really easier way to do this so what you can do here on the lock screen so instead of doing these three gestures just shortly press here on the bottom on your focus mode and bam you can immediately toggle it off next up still on the lock screen and this has to do with your passcode i just can't believe that people are still using passcodes that are really bad for example 0000 the moment somebody gets your iphone a thief or malicious person you're gonna use this one or one two three four five six seven eight so i highly recommend you to have a passcode that is a really more difficult to guess and talking about the passcode there are some other things i want to mention here that are essential and that is to use face id as much as possible in public and not your passcode let's say for example your face doesn't recognize you in the first place so you can just turn off your iphone and just try it again a couple of times instead of typing your passcode if somebody sees your passcode code in public that's the gateway through your whole iphone that passcode is the devil and with that i'd like to cover the next part about passcodes if you're using specific banking apps in the netherlands here with abn amro or in the states you probably have chase or jp morgan don't use the same passcode to get into your banking app as the one from your iphone let me repeat that don't use the same passcode you have on your iphone as on the banking app this is absolutely a no-brainer so make sure these two are different and obviously also make sure that they're not easy to guess so no 0000, zero, zero, zero as i just demonstrated and no one two three four five six so it's important that you have a passcode that is different for both and hard to guess okay so the next thing has to do with privacy and also with your battery life and that is tracking tracking of what you're doing on your iphone inside your app so when you go to settings privacy and security and go to tracking we have this option here to allow apps to request to track you can have this toggled off that's what i recommend which means apps cannot track you and they will also not ask you to track if you have apps that are tracking you so this list is pretty small but on your iphone it's probably longer apps that are tracking you are continuously in the background following you and this consumes battery life and i'm not even talking here about the privacy that you're giving away so i highly recommend you to check this toggle off the apps that you don't want to track and i highly recommend you to toggle off allow apps to request to track next up still in privacy and security something similar to tracking is location services scrolling down to analytics and improvements and people need to have a check at this as well share iphone analytics so this basically means that you're sharing your data and the things you do with apple some people like to do this but i myself want to save battery life and i value my privacy so then if you want that make sure to toggle off a share iphone analytics next up still in settings let's go to a general and then go to background app refresh 
crash. And this is also something many people are overlooking, but this is one of the biggest battery drainers on iPhone and people are really underestimating this. Background app refresh basically means that apps are continuously refreshing in the background, gathering new information, gathering new data, and this consumes a lot of battery. As you can see here, Apple even mentions it themselves. Turning off apps may help preserve a battery life. So if there are apps that you think are not necessarily needed to run in the background, you can just toggle these off. Music, for example, not needed. Maps is maybe one you want to have toggled on. A shortcut, a speed test. This is something you need to look into personally. But yeah, background app refresh, don't underestimate that one. You want, you can even put this on Wi-Fi or completely turn this off. Then here still talking about the battery. It's important to not fully charge your iPhone. So if you're charging your iPhone, make sure to charge it to around 80%. That's the max. That's really the sweet spot to preserve your battery life and get the best battery health. How this actually works is your iPhone has a lithium ion battery and the moment you charge it from zero to 100%, it's going to eat up a cycle normally. And the higher your cycle count, the quicker your maximum capacity is about to drop. So yeah, when you charge your iPhone to around 80 to 85%, your cycles won't add up that quickly and just meaning your maximum capacity won't drop that quickly as well. Meaning, I know this is a bit tedious, but meaning that you can use your iPhone longer. Your battery life will be better over the course of the lifetime of using the iPhone. So yeah, don't fully charge your iPhone all the time. Of course, if you really need all the juice for a couple of days, you can do it. But if you don't, make sure to take this into account. And what you could do even then is go to charging and make sure to toggle on optimized battery charging. Another thing you can do to even make sure that you always charge around 80, 85% is to toggle that off and then just drop the charge limit to around 80, 85%. Another one with regards to the battery life, people that are forced closing their apps, oh my God, that's really not smart. I don't know why people are doing this, but people think sometimes that it saves battery life, but instead it's doing the opposite. When you close an app and then again open it, it needs to reload fully and that takes actually more a battery life than for you keeping it in the background just like that going back and it stays in a relatively stable and low power state so it's not consuming a lot of battery highly recommend you to not force close your apps all the time and still talking about battery health here i highly recommend you to toggle off always on a display so for example if you have an iphone a 16 pro 15 pro one with promotion i highly recommend you to toggle off always on display so you can do that by going to settings display and brightness always on display and make sure to toggle this off. This is eating a lot of battery. I'm not really a massive fan of this feature. I'm not using my iPhone like on my desk a lot, it's mostly in my pocket. So then it's just draining battery for nothing. So I highly recommend you to toggle this off if you don't have your iPhone in front of you a lot. Next up, and this is a pretty easy one, but really important. And that is to always check regularly whether your iPhone needs a software update. So right now this iPhone is up to date. Not only is this going to fix a box and help you to get the best battery life normally but also has to do with a lot of safety and security features especially recently there were some malicious people that found security vulnerabilities inside of ios and it's highly recommended just to update to make sure that your iphone is safe and secure and people cannot exploit these bugs and loopholes if you can make sure to check that regularly so you have the latest and greatest software Software. And then lastly, two interesting ones, mostly useful for when you're traveling. Don't connect to public Wi-Fi's. Honestly, I see this a lot at airports or train station, but I highly recommend you to not connect to public Wi-Fi because it's just an easy way for thieves and hackers to get access to your data and use it in a malicious way. Highly recommend you to not connect to public Wi-Fi only if it's really necessary, maybe urgent, but yeah, try to avoid that. And with that, I'd also like to share that if you're charging your iPhone in public, don't use public USB. 
USB ports. I've seen some really shady stuff here, some reports in which people were being juice jacked. If you can use a power brick, just a charging brick and then connect that to your iPhone, that's fine. But immediately connecting your iPhone to a public USB-C or USB-A port to charge your device, that's actually really dangerous. You don't know uh, where you're connecting exactly to because it's very simple. When you're connecting to one of these USB-C or USB-A ports, you're basically allowing data to be transferred. That's not the case when you're using a power brick. So be really cautious with that. All right, guys. So yeah, these are some things you absolutely need to stop doing on your iPhone. I hope this was helpful. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, like this video. I hope these tips were helpful and see you in the next one. Peace.